If you've spent any time on social media over, say, the last two or three weeks, you've likely come across videos that look like this. I can't function anymore. Financially, I just... I don't understand anymore. Where, where are we supposed to live? Where can I live in a place where I'm able to enjoy my life as well? Because I'm not enjoying it here. I feel so utterly stuck. I don't know what to do anymore. How the hell are, is anyone existing in Canada? Like, I just, I feel trapped. But the cost of living is outrageous in Canada. It's just so frustrating that, like, you do all the right things, you go to university, and then you come out, you get a job, whatever, and you can barely f afford rent. Life in Canada is now so miserable, depressing, and demoralizing that well-educated and hard-working Canadians are now filming themselves, breaking down, crying and on the verge of just giving up because despite doing everything they were told growing up to work hard to get educated and to save money the basic necessities in life are slipping through their hands food prices continue to hit record highs rental prices in canada are also at record highs the idea of owning a home forget it house prices rose again last month and even if you do own a home mortgage costs have spiked over 30 percent another record but something doesn't seem right. The people that are in charge of this country, you know, the same people that caused this problem to begin with, look as though they're now taking victory laps on top of the dead dreams of struggling Canadians. According to Christia Freeland, wage growth has been outpacing inflation for the past six months, and that Canada's debt to GDP ratio is the best in the G7. And according to Justin Trudeau, Canadians are doing uh, better than they were before. Can't you just feel how much better we're all doing? Experts and economists have been yelling the solution as loud as they can. Cut immigration into this country. Continuing to bring in record numbers of people when supply can't keep pace with demand is a recipe for disaster. But the immigration extremists that run Canada have no interest in heeding the calls of people who are much smarter than them. It's really too bad because the people who are hurt most by their reckless commitment to record immigration aren't the ones in charge. It's the people pleading for help on social media. Drop a like in the video, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel. And the common question for the episode is this. Has life ever been more difficult for you than it is today? Let me know in the comments and let's get into it. Take a look at this video, which was posted a few days ago, which now has over 7 million views. I want to know how the hell people in Canada are even living. I generally consider myself a positive person. Well, I know I'll never truly be homeless. Like, I have family to live with. And, you know, like, I have options. Like, I'm luckier than a lot of other people, but... How the hell are, is anyone existing in Canada? Like, I just, I feel trapped. And like, like, I just got a good job. I started in September, but even with that job, it pays less than 40 grand a year. And it's a job that requires, a, like, education. And even on that job, like, I still can't do shit. I can't buy anything. I can't afford the rent these days. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just feeling so much despair like how is everyone else and are you okay because the answer is probably no and i know i'm lucky i don't i don't have kids i have like good family that will support me but i just i feel like i can't stay here but i can't move anywhere else take that in for a minute think about the levels of hopelessness of despair and depression someone has to be in to film themselves crying and breaking down and begging for help people are being pushed to the edge in this country and none of it is normal one thing that she said which really shocked me was when she said she was lucky to not have children. Being this woman's age and not having children is not lucky. It's horribly depressing and sad. And if you thought that was bad, take a look at this video, viewed more than 12 million times. I'm having a day. Or I'm having a life. I don't know, man. I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm sitting outside work, crying my eyes out in my vehicle. Because... I can't function anymore. Financially, I just... I don't understand anymore. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour. And I... Can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. I, um... I 
can't even literally keep gas in my car to get to work three days a week because I can't afford it. Like I get paid and it goes to car mortgage, a couple little bills, and then maybe $80 in food for the week. And I literally only buy groceries when my daughter's home now. On the weeks that she goes with her dad, which is Monday to Monday, what I've started doing is I buy a loaf of rye bread and I work really hard to keep that one loaf of rye bread lasting me the whole week. $34 an hour, can barely survive, and has to rely on maintaining a loaf of rye bread for a week. Here's another one. So I live in Ontario. And I need someone to tell me the pros and cons of living in America. Because at this point, Canada just ain't it. It's just, like, not it anymore. Like, the, the cost of living, it's just, it's too much. The wages are staying the same. I can't afford to move out. I'm 24, and I'm embarrassed that I can't move out. I can't leave my toxic household. So what am I supposed to do? Where where am I supposed to go? What are the pros and cons of living in America? And everyone's like, oh, Canada's so great, this and that. It's not anymore. So where do we go at this point? Where, where are we supposed to live? Where can I live in a place where I'm able to enjoy my life as well? Because I'm not enjoying it here. I feel so utterly stuck. I don't know what to do anymore. You go to school, you get a degree, and you're still not guaranteed a job. 60k a year that used to be like a decent amount of money not anymore so where do we go what are the pros and cons of living in america because i need to get out of here goes to school works hard gets a degree finds a job for sixty thousand dollars a year and can barely get by you notice a common theme in each one of these videos each person making this desperate plea for help on tiktok has done everything they were told to do to work hard to save their money, not to spend like crazy, not to live above their means. Doesn't matter because life is now so difficult and so miserable that they can't keep up with anything. The reason these videos have gone so viral is because these videos are so relatable to the average Canadian. This is how Canadians are feeling right now. They can't keep up with the cost of living. And the comments underneath these videos speak to that point exactly. It's completely absurd. The entire situation, the absolute idiots in charge keep shoveling in refugees and immigrants by the hundreds of thousands and into the major cities no less. Not realizing that in three to four months time, the country will become a frigid wasteland. This isn't California. Sleeping outside in a tent with your summer clothes on ain't gonna suffice. I'm lucky I don't have kids is the saddest part of this. I completely agree. If that's the state of our country, how do we even think this nation will survive? We just moved our adult daughter in with us because her rent was well over $2,500 per month. One bedroom, 900 square feet, that's it. Struggling like never before? Unable to pay for groceries, rent, and basically anything else? Well, that doesn't make any sense because our Prime Minister back in March told us that Canadians are doing better than before. We believe in investing in the middle class and people working hard to join it, and that's why Canadians are doing uh, better than they were before. Maybe the depressed and demoralized Canadians making these videos on social media and the millions of Canadians that relate to these videos are just experiencing inflation differently. And again, how could these Canadians really be struggling that badly when Christia Freeland this week told reporters that wage growth in Canada has been outpacing inflation for the past six months. At 5% wage growth outpaced inflation in July, just as it has done for the past six months. And at just 5.5% unemployment is near historic lows. Oh, and last month, well, that one woman was living off of one loaf of rye bread per week and having to conserve her gas to go to her job where she makes $34 an hour and can barely survive. Christia Freeland wanted to remind all Canadians that Canada's inflation rate was the lowest in the G7. And to go with it, she wanted to remind us all that Canada's plan to fight inflation was working. Of course it is. The reality is that inflation in Canada is out of control. Not like you really needed me to tell you that. Inflation rose again in Canada last month, up 3.3%. Grocery prices continued to rise at 8.5%. Mortgage costs were up 30%. And electricity was up 11%. Oh, and rent in Canada is at an all-time high, up 21% from July of 2021. Average cost of rent in this country, over $2,000 a month. But what's behind this out-of-control spike in the cost of living? 
Well, it's not because of the global response to the pandemic, as some in the government like to remind us. It's not because of the war in Ukraine, as Justin Trudeau likes to remind us. In fact, according to many experts, it's because of record high levels of immigration. Two days ago, Scotiabank's vice president and head of capital market economics said that Canada's record high immigration is spiking inflation. As he says, alas, no one will win a Nobel Prize in economics for observing that when you add a massive surge of immigration into a market with no supply, rents and housing prices will push higher. The argument that immigration could invoke balanced effects on demand and supply side pressures on inflation that cancel each other out was never sensible and we're getting the kind of persistent housing inflation I've warned about since last year when immigration numbers were skyrocketing. Real estate experts in this country are saying the exact same thing. Wanna buy a home here in Canada? Forget it. Last month, Royal LePage warned Canadians that house prices will again rise to 8.5% by the end of the year. According to them, the national aggregate home price, calculated from the median of all housing types, is projected to rise 8.5% to $821,454 by the end of the year, up from $757,100 in the fourth quarter of 2022. That is up significantly from the 4.5% increase Royal LePage predicted in its April survey when it said that prices would end the year at $791,170. The company said an ongoing shortage of listings and demand from immigration mean pressure on prices will continue to build. Bankers and real estate experts are sounding the alarm on record high levels of immigration, driving up the cost of living, making life miserable for Canadians here in our country. But the federal government doesn't care. In fact, their diehard commitment to immigration seems unwavering at this point. What we're seeing is a federal government willing to sacrifice the future of Canadians in order to bolster GDP numbers to make sure that more jobs are added to the economy, when in reality the majority of these jobs are low-skilled jobs which suppress the wages of Canadians. As Christia Freeland always likes to remind us, Canada's debt-to-GDP ratio is the lowest in the G7. That's why the budget I've tabled today will enable Canada to remain the country with the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7. Continuing to focus on that metric, GDP, while cost of living spikes for Canadians and while quality of life plummets, and while social cohesion is destroyed by mass immigration, is the equivalent to saying, graph goes up, world more gooder. That's the kind of thinking that has led us to where we are today. This is the kind of leadership that results in people making videos like this, where despite working hard, doing everything they're told, they can't afford to live in this country anymore. They're lucky to not have families. Is that the kind of Canada that we want? Where people have to leave this country behind, the country of their own ancestors, just to get by. It's a sickening disgrace, if you ask me. All right, ratio of the week time. The winner this week is journalist Teresa Wright. You see, Teresa Wright thought it would be a good idea to ask Pierre Polyev this question. Hello, Mr. Pelyev. Um, a number of your own comments and actions have been um, characterized as dog whistling to by the who? far right. By who? By a number of by different. But I think it's been by characterized who? by that way. But by are who? you trying to sir, court? Are, I, I are you trying to, to court to the clarify, far right? Sorry, I just need to clarify. By who? By a number by of who? different experts and a Ex number of different people experts? who. Who work? Who, who, who are the work experts? In this? Okay. Well, I think right. it's been established that right. this is this is yeah, a, a right. concern. I, I, are not, you trying to court the far right vote? I, sorry. I, who are these experts? You say that there are experts who are saying this. Who are they? My question is: Are you trying to court the sorry, far right I, vote? I, I am sorry. The, your question uh, seems to be based on a false premise. You can't even uh, tell me who these experts are. It sounds like it's just a CBC smear job. Ah, yes, those experts. The experts that no one can seem to be able to name or source. Funny how that happens. I guess she wasn't expecting a conservative to show a backbone and confront a journalist for asking such a stupid question. I have to say, it's quite refreshing to watch an interaction like that. Some of these journalists need to be put in their place. Anyway, Teresa Wright thought that it would be a good idea, after getting humiliated by Pierre Polyev, to ID herself, to show the world that she was, in fact, the journalist who asked that fantastic question. She's really proud of her journalism here. She says, I tried to ask Pierre Polyev whether he is trying to court the far-right vote. 
He would not answer the question, saying my question sounded like a CBC smear job and a distraction from the real issues. Well, it is a CBC smear job, and of course it is a distraction from the real issues. After all, when was the last time Theresa Wright ever asked Justin Trudeau or Jagmeet Singh if they court the far-left vote in Canada? The ratio on this tweet is exceptional. 7,494 replies to only 3,280 likes. Shannon Boshi responded to this saying, you know, one of the most fundamental human rights is that when you're accused of something, to know who your accuser is. If you can't name the accusers here, it looks like you're just making stuff up. Good for him for calling you out on your lies. Sean Rickard wrote this, I'd sit down before you publicly humiliate yourself any further. And Tim Hortons is hiring. And look at this comment, over 2,000 likes. You were completely unprepared and burned a bridge with the next PM. You weren't ready with any quotes from notable experts, only vague innuendo colored by your personal biases. That was a shameful display on your part, and it's clear you're not deserving of his respect. Very well put. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for us this week on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.